Sitting on the plane to Guatemala City is a bag of mixed emotion. Gut feeling and experience tell me I will soon fall in love with this country. New stories tell me something else. In the capital alone, 1,500 people get murdered every year, and those are just the official stats. Most of those bullets had another gang member's name written on it. But what if someone gets a taste for hunting some Swedish gringo? It's not like I blend into the crowd. Walking from the airport to my hostel raises the tension further, as I'm passing rows of derelict cars and locked down houses with bars for windows. And the spot I marked on my map turned out not to be my hostel at all, but a small chapel with an ongoing funeral for civilians killed in gang-related crossfire. How dangerous is this country really? Well, I guess I'm about to find out. Guatemala City is a place most tourists skip entirely. An overwhelming percentage catch transportation straight from the airport heading to considerably safer colonial city Antigua or someplace else. And the lack of tourists show. Apart from me and the staff, my hostel with capacity for at least 50 people is absolutely abandoned. All the locals I asked told me to stay away from Guatemala City. Too dangerous for gringos, they said. At the same time, driving around on the streets of Guatemala City feels pretty much like anywhere else, if it weren't for the abundance of heavily armed police. And the fact that you get to pass a gate and a security guard to get in and out of your house. Hola. Only a handful of the 25 so-called zonas are considered dangerous to visit, and people greet you with warm smiles. But every once in a while, the other violent reality shows its face. Although captivating, in the end I decided not to push my luck and spend more than a day and a half in the capital. Instead, like most tourists, aiming for Antigua, the site of Guatemala's historic capital 25-30 kilometers away. For some reason, arriving to Antigua feels a bit like that scene in the Lord of the Rings movie, when the hobbits reach Riverdale after being scared shitless by orcs you immediately feel this is a safe place where people will take care of you. People everywhere greet you with smiles and wrestle each other to be the one giving you the directions you need. And it doesn't make matters worse, you crash right into the middle of the Christmas celebrations, drowning in snowmen, Santa Clauses and Holy Marys. Feliz Navidad! Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. Well, I might have to take a step back here. Antigua can be a dangerous city, albeit not in the way you would imagine. When it comes to lighting firecrackers, these guys are freaking maniacs. But just as the hobbits needed to leave Rivendell, Antigua can eventually start feeling a little bit too peaceful. Luckily, Guatemala is packed with active volcanoes in numbers that make Mordor seem like a children's playground. To mount at least one of them is absolutely mandatory.
climbing the Pacaya volcano is considered more or less innocuous. Although the bedrock deep down is steaming hot. <laughs> hot enough for a little barbecue party. Let's do some marshmallows in the lava. <laughs> Let's try this one. Uh, it's it's kind of burning. It's a burning sensation. Yeah, so that didn't work. Wait long enough and you might be lucky enough to see the cute little eruptions from the mouth of Pacaya. On the other hand, looking in the distance towards the El Fuego volcano is pure horror. This one still spits huge chunks of lava and pyroclastic flows on a daily basis. A reminder of the disastrous eruption 2018 that killed at least 200 people. This sensation explains the startling amount of expats who came here as regular tourists and then never left. Honestly, you see them everywhere doing something with textiles. If you can't get enough of textiles, by the way, catch a shuttle to nearby Chichi Castenango, famous for the country's most overwhelming Mayan market. Atitlan is also world famous for the epic views you get over the lake from atop the mountains. But you don't necessarily have to walk all the way up there. As my horizon broadens, I grow sad and frankly a bit pissed off over the fact that people avoid Guatemala out of safety. With 84 countries traveled, I'm convinced that danger is more an effect of your own poor decisions rather than the place itself. And the fact that I feel safer walking a badly lit street here at night than in my hometown, that's gotta count for something, right? But most of all, can you really afford the risk of missing out on one of Central America's truly most epic countries? That, if anything, would be reckless behavior. Well, that's enough about that. Let's meet up in El Salvador in a week or so.